Hello guys, this is Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a different kind of video. So today we have a video about news, about rumors. And well, as any news reporter, I have to put a shirt on. I am married to the news, baby. Married to the news. So this is the first video I do of this type, so I will be reading a bit because I still don't know how to properly do it, but I just wanted to inform you about Polaris 30. So, uh, first, for the most unaware about how hardware things uh, about hardware things work, so GPUs and CPUs usually have code names, and those code names are related to their architecture. This, of course, before launching the final product. For example, the Ryzen codename is Zen, and the GTX 10X series uh, are Pascal cards, of course. But well, um, some cards like the Vega 50, the Vega 56, yes, and the Vega 64, they maintain their uh, architectural or codename name, which is Vega, of course. So Vega 56, which has 56 core units, and Vega 64, which has, yes, 64 core units. You are getting it. At this point, you must have already understood that Polaris is, yes, the RX mid and series. We currently have the RX 4 series, which are, of course, Polaris 10, the first iteration of this architecture, which was launched back in 2016. In 2017, we got the RX 5 series, which is Polaris 20. The difference, well, mostly a mild clock rate, uh, clock speed, clock speed increase and a decrease of power consumption at the same clocks comparing to the previous generation. This all led to, let's say, 10% improvement overall. In some scenarios and in most scenarios, it wasn't even 10%. Now we have this rumor about Polaris 30. And well, the thing is that according to Cheap Elf forums, uh, this new refresh will have an expected, uh, an expected performance of 10-15% to 15 above the Polaris 20 performance. And it will be releasing next month in October. Crazy, huh? Next month without any uh, kind of news of that. It will have a reduction from 40 nanometers to 12 nanometers FinFET technology, both from global foundries, yes, global foundries. Um, that alone will reduce power consumption and raise the clock speed barrier a bit more. Still, 15% only on core speed performance on the core speed um, increase of clocks is a bit much to ask, I, I think. So unless they refine other aspects of the architecture, it will be uh, really difficult and I highly doubt it that they will make it to the 15% of course. In my opinion, they could have even more if they had GDDR5X or even GDDR5X to um, the Polaris 30. But, well, I'm just a newbie and I don't think that is even possible. There is one thing, though. Can it be real? Can it? Can it? AMD doesn't have any Polaris 30 on the roadmap. But, but, it didn't have any Polaris 20 on the roadmap either. And they made it happen. So this may well be reality and we may start seeing some Polaris 30 cards in between, I would say, like between mid-October and maybe we can buy them at the, um, the beginning of November. Maybe. After all, the real new mid-end cards uh, with a new architecture using the 7 nanometers lithography um, are called Navi and will only be launched in 2019. So the same applies to 7 nanometers Vega 20, of course. And well, with this all, you must be thinking Another refresh? Seriously? Well, but this may come real handy to AMD. Think with me, Nvidia has now shortage on the RTX cards, the new RTX cards. And well, they have absurd prices. And the performance, the price performance ratio is also absurdly bad. So people are still buying older generation cards, let's say like the GTX 1070, 1080 and the GTX 1080 Ti. Damn, even the GTX 1070 Ti, which is... <laughs> you know it. This is where AMD kicks in with these new cards. Imagine you, a mid-end gamer that 
doesn't really want to expend more than let's say three thousand uh, three thousand dollars on a gaming GPU having a card like an RX 680 let's call it 680 uh, which would perform nearly a GTX 1070 maybe a little better in some case scenarios like for example Vulcan games and on computing of course that is not even debatable uh, but this all while costing less and well, that's it. I think that this is where AMD wants to grow even more on the mid-end and low-end markets. But also don't forget to take this with a grain of salt since there are just rumors. For now, of course. Uh, and it may happen, but it may not happen at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> so guys, that's all for today. Sorry for the video, I'm not used to do this. Uh, so the video will be really really lame, so sorry. I just hope you you understood something about the Polaris 30 and the architecture and the newer cards that are coming or not. Um, sorry one more time for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget leave a comment on the comment section because I really like to um, to know, I would really like to know what you think about these new cards or this rumor. I really want to, to know. And also don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video, follow me on the... Um, on what? Seriously, on what? Follow me on the social media and you can also donate on Patreon and Paypal. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.